The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, we're coming back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We got the S&P is up three points. We have the NASDAQ up 4.25. We got Russell up 8.4, and the Dow's up 34. Gold right now is up almost 10 points on the day. We got silver right now up over 1%. Copper is up half a percent. We got uh, oil is down 60 cents on the day. Natural gas is down um, almost 1%. It's down about 0.8 right now. We got corn down about 6 points. We got soybeans down 4. We have euro dollar down 32. Pound dollar down 61. Aussie's holding on after that master monster crush it had yesterday. And it's currently up at 19 pips. We got euro yen is down 54 pips. Dollar yen down 11 Pound is down 86 with the dollar cad down 31, and the dollar franc is up 9 pips on the day. So, uh, let's see. What do we got? Let me pull up a couple other things here. And look at what we can do. Okay, all right. So, I wanted to look at a few of the markets, see if we can find any potential opportunities going into this Friday trading hour. And uh, let me get them going. There. There it is, right there. Okay. Um, over here, so pulling up and we'll just go through. We'll get some of the charts to see if we see anything along the way. And uh, we got a dollar CAD right now down a deviation, so bouncing right off that deviation line right there. It's actually moved almost uh, you know, one and a half deviations, over one and a half deviations on the day. So nice bounce right there. Didn't quite get a V spike on that one. Got to set up your charts a little bit different for the forex pairs uh, to be able to do this. But we'll go through. We'll look at them. And uh, let's see. We got a oil had a nice V spike at the deviation level and um, took place right there this morning at nine o'clock. So if you chose a ten o'clock expiration, would have had a nice trade. Even I think you might might have pulled off an eleven. Depends on what strike you got. So uh, you probably, uh, I don't know about the 11, but definitely the 10 o'clock would have worked out for you. It kept coming back down, finally decided to move on up. Looks like it's been moving on up all the way to that half deviation line. So in the money, 10 a.m. would have worked out of the money, like a half deviation move, like out of the money contract would have been a great trade as well. Uh, scrolling on down, just trying to see if we can find anything current, though. Uh, looking at gold. Gold right now is up at a deviation level. So one deviation high to low. We definitely got that move. So we just now we just need a um, we need some sort of V spike. That would be nice. We got pretty close. Uh, this would sort of you know come close to qualifying for a V spike right here. And uh, this is you know looking a little deeper, okay, than what I normally uh, talk about. But if you look at this, what you'll notice is these two bars on each side of these big volume bars are half the size. So sometimes when I do look for a V spike, if I see like just a mass, like two massive volume bars together, that'll tell me I have one. And often, if I go down to maybe a higher time frame, I might see it. Like there's on the 10 minute, we sort of have the same thing still going on though. And uh, maybe go even one step higher, see if we can see it. If it gives it to us, maybe on the 15. So we didn't really get it on the the 5, 10, or 15, but it's the same concept. So it's not just, uh, you know, here's the magic of the rules. I mean, you need to look at the reality of what's going on. The, the market has moved a deviation from low to high, okay? The volume is spiking much more than the average move and then letting that go. So meaning they're dumping off all their shares before they bell. If they're doing that, that creates an opportunity for you as a trader to be able to hop in and potentially find a trade. So that's when we hop on over and we look at the, you know, so the binary scanner and, you know, see what we can do here. So let's see what we can pull up. And maybe we'll be able to find a nice little gold trade on this. Let me close this on my tickets. There we go. 
Okay. All right, so we'll uh, pull up gold and just see, you know, what do we got going on that might potentially be a trade for us? We're sitting right here over at 1234.6. We really are on a short bias on the market right now. And let me flip this around and see what we can um, find, if anything. You know, is there anything there that we can take advantage of? It looks like there's not really an in-the-money sell that's just uh, standing out at the moment. So unless the 1234 is really starts, uh, you know, shooting on down here in the next 15 minutes, uh, we we'll don't have a trade, but we can click on that. And what I'm saying on that is, like, you know, you could have this buy that you would rather sell uh, on this contract. Now, this would be a high profit, you know, profitability type trade, like if you're going in and going on that sell side. So if you wanted to lean to the sell side, this would be an out of the money. This would be more of an expiration trend collection type trade. But if you thought we were going to close down into the day over here on gold, then uh, that would be, uh, you know, a potential trade set up for you right there. You go in, you got somebody trying to hop out at 65 um, right now. But, I mean, you are requiring that there be basically a 6 to 7 tick down move on that trade for you to be able to take advantage of it. So that would be one possibility. But, again, the, the issue on expiration premium collection is you have higher risk. The, exp the issue on expiration trend collection is that you have the risk of – you have movement risk or dollar risk. you got to sort of pick your poison, okay? So which one do you prefer – Obviously, we don't prefer either, but uh, you got to pick one or the other. And so, with that one or the other note, you know, you can go in and you know maybe grab that and throw that order on. You know, I'll fill that guy. I'll take his trade. You know, that type of thing. And that becomes a sixty-five dollar sell trade is a thirty-five dollar risk, a sixty-five dollar profit. Okay. So that's looking for gold to close below twelve thirty-four point seven. So uh, we'll see if that happens. Uh, now, that's a movement risk versus a dollar risk trade. So we can go over. We can check out one of the other metals coming up right here. we got silver right around the corner, right? So coming up over here, we could look at that and see if there's any possibility of a uh, silver contract that we could go on and take advantage of. And, uh, so on the silver contract that we got going on, Looks like uh, it's moving down as well. Don't really see a short on silver either. So no shorts really popping up. Um, I can go through and I can go, okay, what about, you know, is there any trade? So I can look at this right here on the scanner to sort of see what's there. We got a 1234, you know, sell on gold. We already got that one going. You have a 19.5 sell on silver. That's a pretty big move. I, I think that would basically be this, that's just throwing your money. Um, away. <laughs> so uh, that would be a, I mean, the payout would be awesome, right? You know, you'd make $95 or whatever on the trade, $5 risk. You know, you do 100 I'd be clean up. But the reality of that thing getting down to 19.5 or lower here in the next few minutes, yeah, I would not, uh, not put my money on that one. So, uh, that would be, you know, an expiration premium collection or trend collection trade because you're expecting a big, big move. So really nothing on silver at all showing up right now that we can take advantage of. Only uh, potential trade set up is that gold trade. And uh, we need about another, you know, six ticks or so. I mean, it may end up being a nice trade um, that we, uh, you know, we may, you know, clean up on a little bit on it. We'll see. So, but uh, it's got to move on down. So I'll pull that one back up for you just to see so you can see what I was talking about. But we're going over here and basically just making the play saying that if it's able to drop below 1230, or at actually 21234, if it's able to get down there, um, then the trade would be profitable. So that's a trend collection trade versus a premium collection trade. Because one of them, you're going to make a lot of money if the market moves. The other one, you're going to make a lot of money if the market moves, stays flat, or you'll make a little bit of money, actually, better, better put it. Make a little bit of money if the market moves in your favor, stays flat, or moves, you know, slightly against you. So, uh, and that really, you just have, like, one right there in the middle. There's just not a whole lot. Like, you, 1234, the next, the next strike for you is 1237. The weeklies are spaced really far out from where we are, so you're just not even getting a lot of even hedging opportunities available on the trade 
But uh, so that's that's one example. And my favorite is usually premium collection. I'll do trend collection. I'll do it at night when I can get it just stupid cheap, like ten dollars and like half an hour to go. So if I get that, then that's I mean that's a fantastic trade. I love that when that trade lines up. So, uh, but I mean they're just not always there. So uh, you got to look for them, and I usually look at them myself. I'll look at them on the pound, and uh, you know they work out well. But uh, this morning the the ultimate trade really on would have been on gold, uh, right there. I mean you break that one deviation mark, you see this massive volume. It's not a classic volume spike in the sense of one bar. But these two bars are just huge, and the volume drops off on both sides, and you see it's pulling back. So, you know, it's all about what's happening with that volume at that extremity, at when it's pushing that deviation level. That's what I really, really want to see. All right, let's keep going. Let's see if we can find anything else that uh, might be, you know, worth our money or not. We got the Russell. Now, if you're trading futures, okay, uh, if you're trading the outright futures, then... You need to be looking at the rollover. You'd be looking at the H4, the 0314, okay, contracts. And uh, we talked about that a little bit this morning. Um, going over, you know, you need to be looking at that volume. Now, if you're trading Nadex, that rollover will happen for you on, you know, Sunday, Monday, okay? So you need to just look at the contract. It'll, you know, keep you, you know, straight there. But scroll down, you know, say you're looking at the S&P or the Russell or the NASDAQ, whatever. All you got to do is go and look at the volume. So we got, you know, almost a million contracts now in the March. We're at about 630,000 on December. So there's, you know, obviously significant more volume in March. That rollover is already taking place and uh, it's in progress and it'll get just that will get wider and wider and wider. So you need to be following the March contract. Uh, you'll get more liquidity. You'll get better bid-ask spreads. Uh, you know, right? I mean, you're not going to get killed if you today or tomorrow you do something different. But uh, again, you can't you can't end up paying a little wider bid-ask spread. Now, if you start going into like last trade date, that's where um, it can really hurt you. So it's just really important that you understand what the what the schedules are, the product calendar. You know, so there's a link right there, product calendar. So first trade date, last trade date. And you'll see, you know, it shows the 20th. And that's, I mean, that's trade date, but that's not necessarily rollover date. And rollover date is usually the Thursday before last trade date. And uh, a lot of trades will roll over actually starting like on Wednesday. Uh, but, you know, Wednesday or Thursday before last trade date usually is when you're going to want to roll over. And if you don't know, the, the simplest answer is always in the volume. Just look at the volume. You can pull up two charts or you can go to the CME. And you can see directly where is the volume. That's the contract I need to be in. And, of course, you can always ask other traders, and they should be familiar with that as well. But the volume is always your ultimate answer. All right. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl, take your phone calls <laughs> now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So uh, what we're talking about again is we got this EPC or ETC trade. Depending upon which way you want to go... Okay, so if you uh, bought the 1234 strike for the 130 expiration, then if it expires above 1234, so 1234.01, because uh, they will round that puppy off, so uh, basically 1234.1, but if, they, if it expires above 1234, and let's say you got into the trade at, you know, 65 bucks, then you would make $35 on that trade, and it doesn't matter how far it goes up. It doesn't matter if it stays flat. doesn't matter if it goes down a little bit. As long as it expires above 12.34, you would make $35. That's expiration premium collection. We call it that because expiration being within 15 minutes of expiration. Premium meaning if nothing happens, you actually make money. If something happens, you can still make money. But you can actually make money if nothing happens. You're collecting the time. You just want the time to tick by. Okay? And then now the other way, let's say you were short. You were bearish. You wanted to go down on that trade. Then you could go and go, like, all right, let's this thing's going to go down. The market's going to go down. Gold's going to go down. And you want to get the higher payout without having the stop loss. Because on the premium collection, you need to have that stop loss. So if it goes down and it hit 1234. And you bought at 65 bucks. you need to get out. Actually, it would be a great risk-reward trade, right? So you'd be only losing $15 on the trade. 
uh, that'd be your risk. And uh, if you got got in at 65 and got out at 50, um, and but if it went up, you can make 35. So not really a horrible trade as long as you're willing to, you know, hit the button. Um, you know, and I'm have a stop plug in that I'm releasing soon that we're beta testing right now. That's pretty cool. So you could do that, or if you don't want to use the stop, if you want to make the higher, you know, payout. Um, which again, if you used your stop loss at a sixty-five dollar buy, you'd actually still have a, you know, a good payout. But if you were short, I was looking at the market. I'm thinking, hey, this thing's short. Things can go down. Then one of the choices you have is you could have sold. So if you would have sold it for you know sixty-five, or even right now selling it for right around eighty, okay, um, then if it expires at twelve thirty-four or below, then you'll be profitable. And again, I call this expiration trend collection. Because we're getting the last 15 minutes. Now, at night, I may honestly be like 30 minutes to an hour out because there's no implied volatility, and you have to go further out to get any kind of premium in there. Um, but, you know, basically expiration trend collection, being closer to expiration, really focusing on that expiration. And if it does move in my favor by that time, then I'm able to make a really nice profit on the trade. So um, it depends on your personality. What I can tell you is... Expiration premium collection has won much more often than not. Okay, so it, it is a higher probability play. Because again, things go in your favor, things stay flat, things go against you a little bit, and you're profitable. But every once in a while, it just hits you. One, either you don't follow your rules and get out. Or two, it goes into that two-minute dark zone. Okay, which all binary traders say the last two minutes... And that's basically the market maker stop quoting. It doesn't mean you can't exit. It just means somebody else has to take the other side of your trade. Okay? And uh, so you go that two minutes and you're a few ticks away. And, you know, what if your stop loss is at 1234, but in the last two minutes, you know, before the last two minutes it's not there, but in the last two minutes it flies down. Then that nails you. So that can be really painful. And, uh, you know, one loss can wipe out a multitude of wins. Now, and that's sort of like where you'd be right now, by the way, if you were in this thing and you were long. You'd be freaking out because you're in the trade and the quotes are, you know, going to be gone any second now, okay? Now, what if, and, you know, and when I say the quotes are gone, I mean they're literally gone. Like nobody's really quoting except for, you know, market makers could be quoting. Um, that's about it. So, you know, I just want you to be aware that this, like, this is how it works, okay? You need, you need to know what that two minutes is. And so in this case, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's just right on the line. And so you're just, you're just hoping that it expires above it if you're long. You're hoping it expires at or below it if you're short. So, you know, you're right in that last two minutes. The nice thing about a trend-collecting trader, okay, a trend-collecting trader is not as freaked out because their payout's higher, their risk is lower per contract. So, uh, but they probably will lose more often. You know, just be real clear about that. Because remember, the market has to move in your favor. So you're probably going to lose more often, but you make more money when you win than when you lose. Therefore, that balances out. And uh, so, you know, pick your poison. and uh, But just be consistent with it. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. We'll let you know if the Bulls or the Bears won on that one. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started... This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So, what happened on that trade? Well, it went down, and in the last two minutes, it was going under, going under, going under. I even saw some shark traders, which are traders that go in there and try to gobble up people for free money in the last two minutes. I think they got eaten, right? So, if you're short, and they came in, they try to go short because, like, ooh, it's under 1234. I see some orders. They take those. Well, sometimes that's the short guy trying to come in. He pounces on them, like myself, buys them back. And the shark trader gets eaten, okay? But um, anyway, so it flew on up. So if you were a buyer, then you were profitable on the trade. If you were a seller and that uh, shark trader came in there, threw some trades out, you went in and bought them out from them, then you could have got out of the trade even. So, uh, But uh, the bulls went on that one. The bears lost on that one. And look at that volume spike that also formed on gold at the same time. You're like, well, gold's closed out now. Well, gold's closed out in the pit. It's closed out on the intraday binaries, daily binaries, spreads. But, uh, you know, being Friday, it's shut down. Other days of the week, it actually will trade till 5 o'clock on the weeklies. So just keep that one in mind that you do have those available to you. Um, also, again, a reminder, being in rollover, make sure you're paying attention to the contract. Now, the name of the contract is right there inside the Nadex platform. It'll say, you know, December right there. So you'll know what contract you're on. It's not hard uh, if you just look, just pay attention. Okay, and like I said, it'll be right there in front of you. Um, as far as some other trades, let's see here. I want to go in. I want to show you some stuff. 
um, not just trades, but actually I want to show you one of the things that we added into the diagnostic scanner here. And one of the things added in is uh, the Nadex calendar. And what this does for you, it shows you when roller is going to take place on Nadex. So basically on Saturday there, if you highlight over, it says, hey, you know, NYMEX crude oil is rolling over. It's going to be CLG4 or CL214 uh, um, over there. So you know, then you got a current underlying. So basically all the contracts that are coming up, or what, what are the contracts today, okay? It'll show you that, and you'll have all of them in one place. So if you're ever trying to find out what market does the underlying, what, what market does Nadex follow, what is the underlying market that Nadex follows, we have not only the name of it, but we also have the symbols for it right here for you. And uh, like the Nick A um, follows the SGX um, right there. So again, it's the SGX um, index, and it's the yen denominated. And it's the one over on the Singapore exchange. So Singapore exchange, yen denominated, not CME exchange, not dollar denominated. So you need to make sure you're looking at the correct symbol. And that's not the easiest symbol to come up with, okay? So I know you can get it from like IQ Feed and Kinetic uh, by subscribing over there to the Singapore in index right there. Or not index, but uh, the Singapore exchange. Um but it's a little bit of a pain. So, you know, it's one of those things, just be aware that you are gonna have to go through a couple steps to get access to an accurate data feed if you're gonna be trading that one. Now, the other step that you can do that's really simple is you can actually go right into the Nadex platform and just pull up the chart because they actually list all of them right there inside, um, you know, their, their platform itself. So if I scroll in here and Let's see, let me pull this up for you. I go over here and I go to the indexes. Then I click on the, the quick chart. Then that is another way for me to look at it if I want to you know, follow it. There's probably the easiest, fastest way for me to get access to it. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. You may not have all of the uh, advanced indicators. So if you want to do more advanced stuff and charting, like on NinjaTrader or whatever, then you know, you're going to have to go and get the data, but there's a free access chart for you where you can hop right in and um, see how it all works. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, another thing to you know, remind people of, I mean, you can get some nice early nighttime trades, even afternoon trades on the DAX and the FTSE. So don't leave those out. Those are ones that a lot of people aren't used to. Um, you know, they're so used to trading, you know, the NASDAQ or the Dow or the S&P, but... Uh, FTSE and the DAX can be pretty sweet. So, you know, make sure that this is a good place for you to learn those, uh, not only in demo, but also even when you go live, you've got defined risk when trading it over on the Nadex Exchange. So it looks like we are still working on pulling back right there. So uh, that short bias was correct, but expiration sometimes can get you. So hopefully uh, that worked out for you. But uh, let's scroll down. Let's look at a few other contracts. See, we got silver. So we're sort of that same little pop up, pull it on back down now. Uh, we'll go in, we'll look at some of our ags here. We got the soybeans. And uh, soybeans has not quite been able to pull off a one deviation move for the day. Uh, it's been working on it, hadn't got there. But I uh, did it pull down and it's pulling on back. We can go back and look at it a little bit, see, move on down the half deviation and run it right back. Pretty much almost a settlement run right there. And let's see, what do we got? Uh, we go look over at corn. Corn, we got a perfect, nice, solid one at deviation move. And uh, literally just got a volume spike on corn. Uh, but we'd be waiting on a breakout of bar, what I call bar three, you know, just to make it simple. So uh, the trade right here, just so you can be aware of it if you're following it. Bar one is the bar bef before the volume spike, okay? Bar two is the volume spike. Bar three is the bar after. And the reason that these three bars matter is because what we're looking at is volume to see if it's at half the amount on the one on each side. So the little diamond right there is showing me, hey, that's a volume spike bar. Now, for an entry, I need to break above the high, okay, of this bar. So it's got to break the high of that bar. If it does break the high of that bar, what is the high of that? The high of that is 428. So I'm going to need a 428.25 tick to be able to get a long entry. And if I do get a long entry, where am I going to be looking to go? How am I going to be looking to trade this? Well, I'm going to be, uh, for a premium collection strategy, I'm going to be looking at the low. 
So right now that low is about 427.25. So I'm probably looking at right around 427 for my strike. And if I can find that strike, let me pull it up over here. So we go in. We'll go over here to corn. And now let's drop this other stuff off and just grab. There we go. Got corn right there. And so I can look. There's several ways I can do that. I can see are there any spreads that match up on the buy side. So I can click buy over here. Is there anything that's like just really low risk? 44 ticks, that's like a 10-point move. Probably not the trade I want right now, right? Uh, this one has a uh, lower movement risk, but uh, obviously a lot higher amount of money that's going to be put at risk. And this is a P&L graph. How much you make when it goes up, right, in the profit territory? How much you lose when it goes down? So nothing on the spreads. Let's go check out the binaries. And this makes it really fast. It's a lot easier than trying to fumble your way through the platform. I doubt we're going to get an entry on it, but just to walk through the steps for you. So, uh, you know, earlier we were looking at a low of like 727, but uh, let's see here, 427. So we'll go in again, grab this, and see if we can get a any kind of potential premium collection trade on corn. So we got, um, if we're shooting for 427, so basically we got a 424.5. That's not bad. Okay, for 86.50. Now again, I have to get, I have to get my trigger. Okay, and I haven't got that yet. So by the time it gets there, it may just be too high. We'll see uh, where we're at whenever the thing goes live well, right there. Get rid of that object. But um. Anyway, so this is looking at where the market's at, and it's pulling on down. We we'll probably get, we may get another V spike actually down at this point. We'll keep watching, and uh, we'll see. We may also be able to lower that strike, get it closer, like maybe a 426 uh, when all is said and done on here. So let me see. Let me plot the uh, live price. We got the price level. No, we don't want that one. Um, but anyway, so oh, there we go. Current price. That's what I was wanting. There we go. So yeah, 426.75. So basically we could be looking for, now that we got this again, if this becomes a V-spike, we'd be looking at a run of 426 entry, which um, when it pops up, will probably be somewhere around 60 to $70, dollars We my guess, on that move back up. So that is probably going to be the entry we're looking for on corn, if we even get an entry. Now we didn't break the high here, so this one will be voided after a couple more bars. But like I said, we may get another volume spike down here. That could give us another potential entry over there on corn. So keep your eye on that one. If it does break the high of the third bar, so bar one, bar two, if this becomes bar three, then we'll be looking for within four bars that it breaks that highest bar, and we'll take a we'll buy a binary that's one tick below. Um, now, another strategy you can use, you can do out of the money, like you're targeting a strike, like you're buying the 428s, okay, getting out when they get there. Um, another strategy is what I call double binary. It's where I buy the one below and buy the one above. So the one below covers the cost of the one above, all right, and allows me to basically put on a trade that if it stays flat, I make a little bit. If it goes up, I'm profitable. If it goes down, I may have to get out and take a loss on the one I bought that's lower, but I still have time for it to turn around and go back in my desired direction and be profitable on that trade as well. So, anyways, but uh, right now it's it's moving down. Doesn't look too bright there on uh, the front, but I'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. Let's go. Let's look at oil. See where we're at on oil. Oil has moved not quite. A, let's see, actually, it, it busted the deviation earlier today, so we got a deviation move. So that means we can start playing the V spikes. And um, so there's one V spike right there. We just got another V spike right over here. We just broke below it. So not too bad right there after that bounce. And look at that. I mean, that's a perfect bounce and then pullback. So uh, it looks like a nice short on oil that just happened on the like the last couple bars here. Um, and what I'm looking at, again, is I'm looking at this volume spike right off this deviation line. It comes up. We're looking for a break below the low of this bar. So there's bar one, bar two, bar three. We want to break below the low, bar three. Within four bars, two bars after that, we get that break. That gives us a short. We're going short on oil. And um, oil is pushing on down. So 
Um, nice short on oil right there. Where would this sort of been? Would have been a little bit higher up here, around 90, around 97, a little higher than 97. So we could also pull that one up and look and see. And that's what it teaches you. I mean, if you just keep your charts open, you keep looking, then uh, you can find some you know potential opportunities. That puts you at about $11. That's not probably the greatest premium on that trade. I don't know if I would want to grab that one for just 11 bucks, but it is there. It's a high probability trade setup. Um, we'll go back over. Let's check out corn again real quick. I'm just trying to keep all these on the screen for you. And uh, so far, looking like we are going to get a volume spike breakout. So we'll see. The volume's been pretty low so far on this bar. If that continues, then um, we will have a trade. All right. So let's go ahead and let's check out uh, what we got on our indices. We got the S&P right now. Uh, you know, pretty flat, not a whole lot of movement, moved up about half a deviation back down and literally just been oscillating around the 1777 level, trying to figure out where it's going to settle at. We got the Dow right over here, 15775. And uh, so, you know, a lot of nothing. I mean, pulled down, went up, but just, uh, it's been really slow. You know, I mean, we're only getting like 30 ticks out of the day there, up and down. Uh, not a big day at all on the Dow especially compared to, you know, some of the yesterday's moves there. We got a solid one deviation from high to low yesterday. We'll get on over at the Russell 2000. It is the one uh, showing some strength, getting some nice movement. On up half a deviation, pulls back down to settlement, does a V spike right off of it, flies right on back up. And uh, so it's showing a little strength here into the end of the day. And um, we'll see if it's going to be contrarian or what it's going to do compared to the other indices. But right now, Russell's showing all the strength. Nothing else is really uh, hopping on board with it at the moment. We have the NASDAQ right now. It's just sitting right around settlement. Had a great V-spike right off the open. I talked about this yesterday, and it's something that you really should start looking for. Um, it's just it's very cool when you do see these. When the market, see how the market's trending up, and then we get a volume spike right there. I mean, basically right at the open. That's a great reversal, Okay. And uh, actually sent out a, a gap fill on NASDAQ. And part of the reason I did it was because of this volume. I was looking, I was like, man, I think we're going to get a volume spike on this. And the volume spiked up. We had the gap. We had the distance we needed to get the risk reward. And then, sure enough, it was a volume spike. became a great gap fill trade. Market ran right back down, filled the gap. So when I say gap fill, fill the gap, what do I mean? Basically, it's the difference between where the pit closed yesterday and where it opened today. So it closed at 4.15. It you know, what price? Well, close that, 34.59.50. And then it opened up this morning above that, like say 15, 16 points above that price, okay? Well, that difference is a gap. Why is, it, why is that gap important? Why is it important on indices more than other, you know, possible trading instruments? The reason it's so important on your indices is because there were stocks that make up that indice, like 100 stocks make up the NASDAQ 100. They weren't trading. But the NASDAQ has moved. And either the stock's got to fly up or the NASDAQ's got to pull down. But there's a bunch of limit orders that got to get filled somewhere to balance it all out. And, yeah, I mean, I know the stocks will gap and everything else, too. So, I mean, they'll all come together. But there's still, no matter what, there's still a bunch of limit orders that haven't been filled. And that's what brings those gaps to a fill over and over and over again. Combine that gap fill with a B spike you got a pretty sweet trade in your hands. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of
of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, so come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So uh, check it out where we got corn right now. We did get another volume spike as anticipated, but it is failing over and over again. So now, again, I'm waiting on four bars after for it not to break that. So, you know, a lot of people go, well, if it doesn't break it, does that make it keep going? Well, probably. But at the same time, I'm waiting on four bars. So by the time four bars happens, that can be quite a bit of movement. So we actually just uh, one, two, three. We're just now on the fourth bar after bar three there. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily give you just a great, like, go short signal in and of itself. Now, the trend itself, of course, is down. We're at the one deviation. Uh, we're actually exceeding that by about, oh, goodness, right now, almost three points, about a 50%. We're almost actually at a one-and-a-half deviation uh, move right now on the day uh, from high to low. So, but anyway, so uh, it anyway, was a nice uh, short move there in corn, and we'll see if it can um, keep it up or not. So, but it's moving down. It doesn't look like we're going to get that V-spike trade at the moment. But keep watching. So if it breaks at 427, then we'll be looking down here for about a 426 uh, buy at the moment. Again, buying the strike below the low uh, for doing a premium collection or buying, you know, the next uh, either this 420 to 430 
um, if you want to do an out of the money or combining both of them if you wanted to go in and do a double binary on them. All right, so uh, just keep coming back to that because I keep trying to see if it's going to pop up or not. We got oil right there. We got that done. Um, again, I do have some questions coming up uh, that I've seen come in about rollover, just trying to get rollover for those traders who are Nadex traders. All right, so a couple differentiations. If you're a futures trader, you need to follow the futures rollover, okay? So usually which is the Thursday before the last trade date. That's when you need to roll your contracts. If you're trading at Nadex, then you need to go in and you need to um, follow the market month that Nadex is following because they usually only roll over one time in a given week. So that'll either be like the Sunday before, Sunday after, whatever, whenever Nadex, uh, whenever the futures roll over. So if they're going to roll over on Thursday, then Nadex may roll over the Sunday before that. Right? You know, they say Sunday, really, I guess Saturday, but because uh, market's open on Sunday there. But so basically, the weekend before, the weekend after, one of those two, they're going to roll. And one of the things I added in to make this easier for you, so you know uh, which contract is Nadex following. Now, again, you got to know anyway, because just look at the contract name. Okay, I mean, it's it's really that easy. It says March right there. You should never not know. You don't have to look anything up. It's right there in front of you. So the thing you need to do is make sure you are looking at the right chart. <laughs> make sure you are looking at the right chart when you place that trade. So... Uh, but what I do is I put up on here, let you know, hey, crude oil and the four U.S. indices, they are going to be rolling over. So uh, basically once the market closes today. So what you could do is before you wrap your day up, go in and update all your instruments to make sure if you're a Nadex only trader that you are, you know, go ahead and update that before you save your workspaces and close everything down, roll over your crude oil and your four, you know, U.S. indices and all that. Okay. So they follow their own schedule. Uh, mainly because they're trying to do it. Now, they are working on adding in some stuff. I saw that now, like, copper and silver, now they're actually doing midweek, where they'll do the weeklies um, on the rollover month. The dailies, they'll follow the current month until rollover, and they'll flip. My guess is that that's going to become more common, so we'll probably end up seeing indices and oil and all that stuff rollover, um, you know, possibly, like, on a Thursday or whatever in the future over on Nadex. So we'll see how that goes. But either way, you want to know what it is. And to know what the current markets are, to click current underlines. And there's a list of everything for you to make it easy. So, and um, if you're looking for ice, you're trying to find that volume trick, like I should do on CME, that can be over on theice.com. So uh, that's where you can look that up. Or just open up two charts and look at daily bars. Either way. All right. Y'all have a great day. You have a great weekend. And I will see you on Monday. I believe that we're all here to contribute something unique and that deep within us lies a special gift, a special talent, our own bit of genius just waiting to be tapped into. When it comes to trading and investing, I can help you tap into yours. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on Thursday, December 19th, I'm hosting a one-hour workshop where I'll share with you my most incredible discovery yet, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator. I developed this tool with one outcome in mind, to do what nobody else considered possible, to put the power of the most advanced indicator, scanner, and trading strategy in the hands of people just like you and me. I can promise you this, you'll never look at a chart the same way again. This event is available to all subscribers to my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, which for the holidays is available free for the next 30 days. No charge whatsoever to new subscribers and no obligation on your part. Please join me by going to the homepage of TFNN.com to sign up for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.